Hello and welcome to another edition of the Eternal Journey. I'm the Resolves, and this is promo time. So today is the first day of the promo cycle with Svetya, Orin of the Kassol. And we'll be able to win one a day of these up until Monday the 28th. But what's more interesting is what this card can do. At a baseline of 4-4 four, for four, 4 in two different factions is sort of medium really. But the rest of the text is really impressive. First off, we've got a Seraph-like ability of the Pay 8 and Exhaustive Svetia to draw all the units from the top four cards of your deck and just discard the rest. And in any sort of late game situation, that's going to be pretty easy to pull off, especially as your opponent isn't going to be able to interact with Svetia. As a summoned effect is that once you've played Svetia, the enemy player can't play spells or weapons until your next turn. So the only way they're going to be able to deal with this is if they've already got a weapon in play, or if they're able to play a killer unit. But for the most part, this is going to be another great piece that you've got as a hero deck against armory, and plays really well with hero pacifier. As well as the main important thing being that if you're a beatdown deck, you can play this on your turn 4, and your opponent can't respond with harsh will or anything like that. And if they're like a unitless deck, then you've just taken an extra turn. And if you're able to chain these with like mirror images or anything along those lines, or even just keep replaying this with Dark Return or even Haunting Scream, then it's very easy to lock out some of the least favoured decks in the format. And I feel like this is a very strongly worded letter from Direwolf Digital towards anyone who wants to be playing any of the unitless decks right now. I feel that like most hero decks want to be playing some mirror images anyway, so this is just like another tool that works really well with the mirror image technology. Okay, so enough about the card, let's look at some decks and see where we could slot it in. Okay, so first of all, we've just got like a Huru Flyers beatdown deck, which is probably like level one for the deck. See, we've not quite unlocked all the Svetties yet, so we've got a little padlock here. And here's what I was talking about earlier with the mirror image technology, which is not only great because in multiples with the Unseen Commandos or maybe some grindy matchups where you've got Kofans going, the mirror image is pretty great. And as well as we already want to be playing the diesel units, like the Amelie Cloud Marshal, then you'll just get just a little bit extra value there. And so it should be really impressive in this deck because this is a beatdown deck at heart and you're still able to curve out, like play Kofon into Pacifier or even on Team Commando and then you play the Svetty, you've just got like, you've got a board, your opponent can't react and then from the next turn onwards you get to play a reactive tempo game where you're holding up Protect and Island's Choice and just playing cheap spells like Permafrost and Levitate just keep getting that damage in. Eventually, you should be able to win the game long before these heavy hitters come into play with the Joe Feast Call and the Amelie. So, that deck's probably like level zero in terms of decks it will build, but we've got a few more spicy brews coming up. So, the second deck is a Svetia Scream Queen. And this is basically just the straight up Felm Tempo Scream deck. We've got the Daryl Beast Calls and the Gorgon Fanatics, just the usual Madness Devour packages, as well as Haunted Scream. And what's great with the Haunted Scream here is that it completely insulates you from any spells like Lightning Strike, Island's Choice, or anything that your opponent thought that they were going to get to play on your turn, because as soon as you played down the Svetia, then your opponent's going to be unable to react. And often that's just going to be able to lead to really quick and easy kill turns. And now you don't need to play the Scream and have to consider, like, I'm playing around Torch, or I'm playing around Lightning Strike, you know, with what I'm going to be getting back because sometimes you really do want to harness screen back the die wood just so you can create that board but sometimes you just put in a position where you have to get Rindra just so you can gain the life and you know that you're not going to get blown up by Torch but when Svetia gets involved we don't have to worry about any of it we just play Svetia Svetia tells your opponent to be quiet for a turn and we get to do whatever we want and though Svetia's activated ability here of the pay 8 and exhauster to Draw some cards isn't exactly perfect in this deck because we do generally want things in our bin so we can start playing Dark Return and, and Haunting Scream with it. We still are quite a unit heavy deck and we should be drawing at least one card off it. So if we're in a position where we need to play that ability then we should be getting some value. Okay so onto the third and deck that I'm most excited about. It's a little bit similar to this one but it's a lot more spicy. Okay, so this is the spicy meatball in question, which comes from friend of the show, Ian Vincent, who's been working tirelessly on this deck all week. And what we've got here is basically a deck that's trying to get a carrier in the bin and put a bunch of battle skills on a Macto, or the follow-up plan of the Hero of the People, and get in there for millions. We've also got a nice little surrounding package for the Hero People here as well, because we've got the, the Piercing Grief 
and the Rindra just to give us some, some relevant abilities that will be able to keep you alive in those fire based matchups. We're only playing two spiders here, and despite having excellent synergy with this uh, pile of justice sigils and this privilege rank, I think often when you get to eight power, it's going to be a little bit too late for that. But it should be able to help you in a real pinch. Just try and find one of these combo pieces like the Inquisitor Macto and the Icaria. As it's fair to say, draw. So if Macto is currently a Revenger, then you are going to put that into play and just draw another card from the top of your deck due to the Destiny ability. This is overall one of the more interesting viewer submissions that we've had. And I look forward to trying this out perhaps this weekend. Just uh, just looking forward to getting my place out of Svetches so I can hit the ladder and silence some opponents. So back on the card for an outro. I think this is real interesting and I'd really like to see more promos like this where we get to have a discussion about what it can do and what impacts it's even going to have on the format. And though you can get blanked by the opponent having a face Aegis, it's also just nice having this card. Like, say you're playing in Skycrag, uh, you, you've made a curve, you've slammed Fetcher. Now you no longer need to worry about any combat tricks, no rock slides or torch is going to be blowing you out. Basically, everything that is on the board is everything you need to worry about. You just get to ignore the opponent has a hand and you just have full information for an entire turn where the only things that matter is all in play. You should be able to figure out what the best blocks are just based on that. And though this might not be the best design for the game, I think it's certainly opening up an interesting space. Okay, so thanks for watching. I've been that results. See you around.